animatedanatomy.com. In this lesson, I will be talking about the respiratory system of a human body. I will focus on the lungs mostly because this subject is very long and I will create two additional videos explaining the anatomy of larynx and explaining the physiology of human respiratory system. Now here we see the uh, very simplified illustration of the human uh, respiratory system and it consists right here starting from the nose from the uh, nasal vestibuli and the nasal cavity as well as the oral cavity. Please note that the oral cavity is mainly supposed to be used for food intake rather than breathing. This is controlled by the larynx here. You also have the frontal sinus here and the sphenoid sinus here. Then you have the pharynx here and the larynx here. If you look at it in 3D, uh, you can see right here this is the oral cavity if I remove the skeletal system. You can also immediately notice the structures I mentioned, the frontal sinus, the sphenoid sinus, and the maxillary sinus that I did not mention in that image, and also the ethmoidal cells. This sinus here is called the maxillary sinus because it is in this bone, maxilla. Now we had the oral cavity plus the nasopharynx the oropharynx and the laryngeopharynx. This part is called the laryngeopharynx because here is where the larynx come. And here is the larynx. It is commonly called the voice box. It is an organ in the neck of the humans. It involves breathing, sound production and protecting the trachea against the food aspiration. It manipulates pitch and volume. The larynx houses the vocal folds, which are essential for phonotation. The vocal folds are situated just below where the tract of the pharynx splits into trachea and the esophagus. Let me show you that in 3D. Right here, it splits into the esophagus here, which you don't see because it's not the part of the respiratory system and here in the trachea. And now we come to the trachea. This is a very interesting part because soon we will come to the lungs and the place where the gases between the environment and the body take place. You see the trachea here and the trachea splits here into the two main bronchi. The two main bronchi later split here into the intermediate Bronchi. Now if we look at the lungs here, here we see the right lung and here we see the left lung. Now because here you need actually heart to fit in on the left side, there is only two lobes, the superior lobe and the inferior lobe. They are divided here by the oblique fissure. However, on the right side, there is enough space for one more lobe and that's why you have here the horizontal fissure that divides the superior lobe from the middle lobe here and the middle lobe is divided from the inferior lobe by the oblique fissure. If you look at it in 3D it's perfectly illustrated. The middle lobe then the oblique fissure, the inferior lobe, and the superior lobe. The superior lobe, oblique fissure, and the inferior lobe. Now it is important to know that the bronchi had here intermediate bronchi, then you have the terminal bronchioles, and you also have the respiratory bronchioles at the end. The respiratory bronchioles are the narrowest airways of the lung one fiftieth of an inch across. The bronchi divide many times before evolving into bronchioles. When the bronchi become so small, at the end they continue here into the alveolar duct 
and the alveolar duct continues further in the alveolar sacs, like this. This is where the gas exchange is actually happening. These alveolar sacs, they are receiving a CO2 saturated blood. They are releasing the CO2 passively, remember, passively from the lungs into the environment, and they are taking the O2. And through the veins, through the veins, they are returning back the oxygen rich blood, which will later be pumped through the left ventricle into the rest of the organs and the rest of the body. As you can see here, the way it is illustrated, they have the capillary beds. And that is in these capillary beds where the blood of the artery goes into the blood of the vein. Here we see the cardial notch, and that is where the heart is. It's important to know that the top of the each lung is called the apex. And down below we have the diaphragm. Now, if we look at the lungs from here, I will explain you very quickly how the lungs work and how does actually breathing work. How do we take the air and how does the air go out? This is very important. This is not anatomy, but I will very, very quickly explain you how it works. Well, first thing you have to know is that between the chest wall and the lung, there is actually a pleura. A pleura is a serous membrane which folds back onto itself to form two layer membrane structure. The two layer membrane structure here we see these structures one layer and then again another layer. Okay, let me zoom in. One layer here and then another layer. This is really important. The layer that is on the chest wall is called the parietal pleura and the layer that is on the lungs is called the visceral pleura. Between these two membranes there is a lower pressure than the outside of membranes when we try to inhale we cause the diaphragm here to pull down. Therefore, the pressure is pulling the lungs with itself. The pressure difference because you have low pressure between these two layers. Also, when you're really excited and when you're running, you can notice that you're actually inhaling by increasing your or expanding your chest. Therefore, this will also pull the lungs with itself and it will stretch the lungs. That way, the air will go all the way through the oral cavity, trachea, and get into the lungs. Once you relax your muscles, the lungs will contract on its own. Once you relax the diaphragm and your chest muscles, you can also exhale forcefully by using another set of muscles that will cause the reduction of the thorax volume. However, when you're normally breathing, you're not doing this. So we can now say that the inhaling is an active process, exhaling is a passive process normally, and as well as the exchange of gases is actually in the lungs, it is passively done without any carrier proteins or something like that involved. This is a very basic explanation of a human respiratory system. If you want a more in-depth explanation for each anatomical structure, please check out my channel and check out my website. I put a link down there in the description below. Hello everyone, I developed Animated Anatomy that you can purchase on animatedanatomy.com. I put them links down there in the description or you can click on a link here in a video. If you're not going to purchase my software, then at least make sure you leave a positive comment, subscribe, or like my video.